everyone, and welcome to episode 3 and day 14 of me feeling like I'm going to die, also known as me having a cold and complaining too much about it. I'm sure you're sick of hearing me mention that, but not as sick as I am, literally. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to ignore that for today and make a hoop skirt slash hooped bustle. So, so far on my channel, I've made two hoop skirts, one from the 1850s, one from the 1860s, and now we are moving into the 1870s, specifically into 1872 when bustles became more popular. So you went from having a shape kind of like this to having a shape like this, with a lot more volume coming straight off of the rump and then falling almost straight down, as opposed to being a nice gentle slope. So it's a very different shape, and obviously making a foundation garment in that shape creates a dress with a very different shape. Um, uh, and I'm quite excited by this because I want to venture more into the bustle era and that requires having more bustle era sort of foundation garments. So I'm making this video for selfish purposes but also because it is sponsored by Skillshare who I will talk about a little bit more later on in this video. So like with my other hoop skirt projects I'm once again taking a page quite literally out of Nora Wah's book uh, and this book is called Corsets and Crinolines and it has a whole bunch of size down patterns based on accident garments uh, for foundation. So it has corsets and stays but also has hoop skirts and some bustles. So this is the one that I'm going to be following today and this is on page 95. Now for copyright purposes I'm not going to be including the pattern or my exact measurements in this video uh, but I will show you the whole process of me plotting it out and if you're wondering how I did that uh, for the smaller patterns in this book I tend to just scale them up on my computer and then either trace them onto new paper or print them out and then tape all the pieces together. But for larger patterns like this you'd end up using dozens upon dozens of sheets of paper and it would just be kind of confusing and wasteful since the pieces are so large. So the way I did this was each of Gua's patterns has a key, so this shows how large 12 inches is. And you can use that to figure out the dimensions for all of these pieces. So when I used a ruler to actually measure this, it was 3.5 centimeters. And that meant that one centimeter was 3.5 inches. Then I could measure these edges and say if this measured 10 centimeters, then I knew that meant that edge was supposed to be 35 inches. And I just repeated that for all of these. This piece was the hardest to draft because it wasn't just straight lines. Uh, and these aren't just straight lines either, but they're mostly straight lines and then they have really subtle curves on them. But for this one, I ended up actually drafting a box that this piece would fit perfectly inside. And then I just used um, various French curves and rulers to try and get the exact shape right. So I think I did a pretty good job. However, I should state that I have very little confidence in this project. Like, I think I'm a 4 out of 10 in terms of confidence on this one. And sometimes it's fun going into a project not knowing if it's going to work out, but this video is due in like three days, so it's feeling significantly less fun right now and significantly more stressful. So let's just hope that this goes together really, really nicely. Um, as I said, I've already got the pattern completely crafted and it's sitting right in front of me. And then I got the main skirt pieces, so the relatively straight portion that forms the front and the relatively straight portion that forms the back, I've gotten cut out. And for this project, I'm using a lightweight cotton fabric that has a floral print to it. I just thought this was pretty and that it would work nicely for this project and it was very, very cheap. Now for boning channels today, I have a few options. I have the proper boning casing, which I think is what I'm gonna end up using and I will link where I purchased this down below. But I do also have twill tape and then I have grow grain ribbon in this really cute little polka dot print. But I don't think I'm going to use this because the pieces have some pretty dramatic curves in them and grow grain ribbon is cut on a straight grain so it doesn't bend or curve very smoothly. So I think I'm going to use the boning casing for this one and then the actual boning I'm using I will also link down below. I can't remember what measurement this is exactly but it is spring steel boning and it's around half an inch wide. So that's what I'm going to be using for the boning. This is going to be my boning casing. I already showed you my fabric and we should be good to go. So the next step is going to be cutting out the upper kind of bustle weirdly shaped portion. And on this pattern piece I've actually already marked the boning channels with a sharpie. So I'm hoping this fabric is going to be sheer enough that I can just drape it on top and I'll be able to see the boning channels through it and just trace around them. So wish me luck on that one. And then the next step is... I don't even know. I really am kind of at a loss for how this project is going to go together and there's going to be a lot of making it up as I go along. So I hope that is entertaining. And I hope it works. I really, really hope it works. So that went better and worse than I was expecting. It was really, really difficult to see the lines through the fabric. I don't know if you can even see them on camera. I can very faintly see it, but I could see it, uh, which I was glad for. Uh, and for all the other projects I made so far for this little mini series, and for the other pieces in this project, the larger pieces that form the front and the back of the skirt, uh, all of those boning channels are placed based off of the 
hem. So you can just measure up from the hem and follow the curve line of the hem, and that's where the boning channels will be. Whereas for this one, they don't match the outer measurement of the piece, uh, and they're not spaced evenly apart. So as you can see, this one is about three inches away from here, and then probably six or seven inches away from here. That's why I wanted to be able to trace these. Anyway, the next step for this is going to be sewing the boning casing on. I guess I will try and sew the bottom edge on first, and then iron it and see if it will conform enough that I can then sew the top edge without it puckering too much. So that is my current plan. And this edge is going to be left free of a boning casing because it's going to be gathered down later on. So that is where I'm at now and now the next step is going to be boning casing. I realized I didn't explain what boning casing is, so I'll do that now. It's two stiff, finely woven layers of twill-like material sewn together at each edge to form a passage that the boning can pass through. This way the boning doesn't have direct contact with the weaker bustle fabric, like it would if you were sewing on ribbon or single layer of twill tape to form a channel, which means boning casing will lead to a more durable garment. But those other methods are fine too, as long as you make sure to tip or dull the ends of the boning. Alright, so I've officially sewn on the three boning casings, or the bottom edge of the three boning casings for the bustle portion. So, the top one I've sewn down completely because I was curious to see if I could get this edge to lay flat. So as you can see here, this edge is kind of wobbly and it hasn't been sewn down yet. And if I was using grow grain ribbon or something that was cut on a straight grain and wasn't flexible, to get this down I'd have to sew little pleats into it to get it to be flat because it wouldn't um, kind of take to this curvature. I'm really bad at explaining this, but the center edge needs to be smaller than the outer edge because it is curved. And a lot of ribbons won't take well to that even if you iron them. That's why you use things like twill tape and bias binding which are cut on a grain line or woven in a way where they will iron flat. However, this appears to iron flat, much to my relief. So I can just go in and carefully iron it and it'll take to the curvature and smooth out so I can top stitch it down without having to gather it or worry about pleats. So see now how it's lying flat? You can see how much better this side looks versus this side? It's completely flat. And now I can go ahead and top stitch that other edge. After sewing on all the boning channels into this panel, I gathered the curved bottom edge down to about 37 inches. This will force the bottom edge inward and create the puffed bustle shape, or that's the hope at least. Now I'm sewing the back panels together with the French seam and top stitching the seam allowance down. I showed this process in great detail in my previous hoop skirt video about the elliptical hoop, so I won't bore you with it again this time. But the short explanation is that the pieces are sewn with the wrong sides facing each other, then the seam allowance is trimmed, ironed, and the pieces are sewn once again with the right sides facing each other so the raw edges are tucked away. And then I hemmed the top edge of the back panel with a rolled half inch hem. Now I'm marking the boning channels onto the back panel, and the spacing of these was a little different than was. Mine are slightly closer together, and since I added 6 inches of length to this, I also added additional channels near the hem. And I'm marking these by measuring up from the hem using a ruler. Alright, so this is what it's currently looking like. This is the back panel, and I got all of the boning casing channels marked. I made a few mistakes, so if you see some faded blue lines, those are the oopsies that I'm going to have to do a better job of erasing later on. But before I actually sew any of these, I'm going to sew the back poof on. So this is the bustle, and you saw me assembling this earlier, and all I've done is I've gathered the bottom edge down. I'm going to line the center of it up, the center down here, and pin that, and then the straight ends line up with the sides and extend past by about an inch. Before I sew the side portions on, I'm just going to sew the bottom edge on. So let me quickly line that up. And I gathered this down slightly bigger than it needs to be. Gathered a little bit more using my fingers and some pins. So now I'm quickly going to sew across this line and then I'll be back. There you can see it in a little bit more detail. So this was the rounded edge that I gathered down and then stitched on. And now I'm just going to take boning casing and I'm going to sew that right on top of 
the raw edge so I can add a bone there and also just to finish off that edge. So now it looks like this and the next step is going to be so sewing the base layer to the bustle. I'm going to sew across one side completely and then on the other side I'm going to sew, jump, sew, jump, sew, jump, sew, jump. Uh, so the bones boning channels are left open so I'll be able to thread boning into them later on. So this is the back panel pretty much done except for boning channels which I can't sew until I have the front panel sewn to this. So I guess that is going to be the next step. But first I'm marking a 5 by 3 inch knife pleat onto the front of each front panel as shown in the original pattern. Then I'm pleating the fabric so the marks match up and pinning it down. I also decided to sew the pleats down by machine. Then I sewed the front panels on. On the side with the openings for the boning, I sewed it with the right sides facing each other and a 1 inch seam allowance, which was later trimmed with pinking shears. And also I made to backstitch before and after the boning casing began, but actually jumping over the boning casing so it won't be sewn shut and it will allow the boning to pass through. The other side was sewn with a French seam, since I didn't have to worry about leaving gaps open for the boning. Anyways. So I just cut out the waistband and I'm following my own measurements for the waistband instead of theirs. I want mine to be a little bit wider and I also want it to be longer because I added two inches to every panel in terms of width uh, just to get it to fit me a bit better. So I definitely needed my pattern to be different than theirs because theirs wouldn't fit with the alterations I made. So as I said, 35 inches by 4 inches. I'm going to sew this onto the top edge of the bustle and top stitch the seam allowance down. And then I'm going to sew up the front seam and fold the front portion inward and then I'm going to fold the top edge down twice to create a channel for a drawstring waistband. As I said, the waistband is stitched on with a half inch allowance, then the allowance is stitched down, and you want to finish the waistband and all the sewing, really, before adding the boning since then it's hard to maneuver. After the waistband is on, I'm sewing the front edge closed with a French seam and leaving the top 12 or so inches open. The edges left open were folded inward by a half inch, twice, then top stitched down to form a neatly finished opening, and I carried that top stitching down the front of the skirt and stitched down the seam allowance as well. And now I'm folding the top edge of the waistband inward by a half inch, sewing it down, then folding it inward again, and sewing as close to the edge as I can. So this is what it's looking like. The front seam is now done up and has been ironed. I left the top 10 or so inches open and then folded that edge inward twice by a half inch, so it's neatly finished. Uh, and I did that after sewing the waistband on and the seam allowance was top stitched down, as I said. And then I turned the top edge of the waistband inward twice by a half inch to create a casing for a drawstring waistband. And now the next step is going to be continuing to mark the boning channels. So all of these boning channels um, on the back panel need to extend on the front panel. They need to sew the casing on and hem this and then we will finally be making some real progress. So I'm going to go ahead and mark all the boning casing channels placement things. You know what I mean. I'm also marking a line an inch away from the hem for the hem. I'll be turning the bottom edge up to meet that line and sewing it down as you can see me doing here. And now it's time to sew on all the remaining boning casing, and I'm stitching on the bottom edge first, then the top edge, and I'm sewing as close to the edges as I possibly can. I'm also moving my way up the skirt, so sewing the casing near the hem first. I prefer this because then the casing channels get shorter and progressively faster to sew on as you work your way up the skirt, which makes it more rewarding, I think. Now I have a lot of footage of this and not a lot to say about it, so it's time for a sponsor break. As I said, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes available. And those classes are focused on editing, photography, drawing, design, business, and just about everything else you can think of. So whether it's curiosity or career ambitions that bring you to their site, you're sure to find something that appeals to you. Most recently, I've been working my way through classes focused on Lightroom and Photoshop and learning about features I didn't know existed, much less how to properly use. It's great since premium membership offers you access to their entire library of classes so you can learn without any limitations, and their annual membership costs less than $10 a month. There are already over 7 million creators learning through Skillshare, and if you'd like to be one of them, there is a link in the description box, which offers the first 500 people who use it two months of Skillshare Premium for free, so you might as well give it a try. Thank you Skillshare for the sponsorship, and now it is back to the sewing. Now I'm using a bobby pin to thread cording through the channel in the waistband, and this cord is about 20 inches longer than my waist measurement. And once it's all the way through the channel, I'm tying the ends off to prevent it from fraying. 
Okay, so this is what we are currently dealing with. I realize it doesn't look like much just yet, but I promise once the boning's in it, it's going to come to life, or at least that is my dearest hope. Excuse me. Excuse me, this isn't your video. This is about a bustle. So I think I'm gonna start by adding the bones to the top sections first uh, to kind of see the shape that that provides. And then I'm gonna add them to the bottom. And I'm interested to see what the shape of this is gonna end up being like. I really, really hope it turns out well. But as I said before, I don't have a whole lot of confidence. This pattern also didn't include measurements for each bone like the previous one did. Uh, so that means that I'm just gonna be kind of guessing or measuring my pattern pieces and then adding probably 10 inches just of ease uh, because I'd rather end up with bones that are too long than too short. So that is my current plan and I'll show you how it looks and how it develops. So it is currently day two for this project and I'm not feeling really excited about it because yesterday did not go particularly well. Though I managed to make major major progress. I got it pretty much all assembled and I got all the boning channels marked and then sewn. I'm just really unhappy with the shape of it now that I'm adding the boning to it. So let me show it to you. I hate it so much. So let me just take you through the issues with this. Number one is that the boning is very, very difficult to get through the channels because the channels are like a millimeter larger than the bone itself. So it is a struggle and it hurts your hands trying to feed it through the channels. Um, so my fingers were really sore last night, so I called it quits pretty early. It was also a pain to try and get those bones through those tiny channels and also curved channel, but I managed to do that. And the shape of the bustle isn't bad. It actually looks quite similar to the picture, but it's not laying flat at the front here. It keeps kind of pushing upward, which causes the other hoops to jut out, which makes the shape incorrect. So what's going on here should allegedly look like this, and I just don't see how that is going to happen. So it's just really frustrating. It really does not look like I'd envisioned, and I think I just have to keep working on it, even though I hate it. And that's not a great mindset to be in, especially when I have like eight boning channels to fill, and it's probably gonna take me an hour to do each one with the rate it was going last night. So I'm just feeling kind of bummed about this, um, but I'm going to keep going and hopefully it will get better. But I wanted to film this because I know probably you feel this way about projects at times, and I definitely feel this way about projects at times too. It's so ugly! It so doesn't look like the picture, which is very upsetting. My outfit's cute though. So that's something. So the only way I can think to describe this process is hellish. Basically, as I think I said earlier, the boning casing is the exact size as the boning itself, which means getting the boning through the casing is very difficult. And since the boning is quite sharp, even though I make sure to round the edges off so it won't poke through the fabric, just with all of the pressure that you have to put on it to get it through the channel, it's actually been tearing the fabric of the channel. So there's one point here where you can see it tore out the stitching, and then there's a point right here where it actually tore through the boning casing and through the fabric itself. And I've also discovered that it's very difficult to get two layers. Excuse me? What are you doing? What? Gwen? Gwen, you have all this space. All this squishy juicy space. Why are you so upset up here today? They're gonna think I'm mistreating you. Oh my god, Gwen. This isn't acceptable. Anyway, as I was saying, it's hard enough to get one piece of the boning through the channel, but to get them to overlap like they need to in order for this to have the proper shape, uh, I just haven't been able to do it. So what I've been doing instead is a method that I'm not particularly proud of, but I've actually been cutting a hole in the boning casing about eight inches away from the start point of the boning, and then I've been threading enough through until it overlaps by about eight inches on this side. So it's not a perfect method, it's obviously not ideal, but it's been working for me, which is something. And and the reason that the bones need to overlap is because where they end there is a point of weakness. So the fabric would be more prone to poking out in that area, uh, whereas when it overlaps it creates a solid form and it smooths out the curve. So I need to cut this bone down and make sure the edge is rounded and then I can insert it into the channel. Is that okay with you? So I made my little slit for the bone right here and now I'm going to thread it through and I cut about eight inches off the end and I also made sure to round the end. So it will be less prone to tearing through than not impossible for it to do so, as I've learned. See like how much I have to force this in? It's really, really difficult to get it in and it doesn't want to go any farther than that. That's just where it stops. So now I have to like 
put so much force into trying to get it through the channel that I actually have blisters forming right there. This has been miserable. I still have two more to do. You know what doesn't make it easier to do? Having a dog on my lap. It really does not want to go any further and obviously there's still all of this that needs to be threaded through. And sometimes what you have to do is take it out and just start over. That took 18 minutes just to thread that much through. This is seriously so incredibly tedious and I'm not even doing it the way I'd originally planned. As you can tell there are like raw edges here because I keep having to cut this and it's just really not ideal but there really isn't another way to do it with how difficult this stuff is to thread through the channels. So I have two more left and then this project will be done at last. Also I should mention <laughs> that I got blood on this yesterday because the boning scraped my leg without me noticing. And it's not a bad scrape but it bled quite a lot and unfortunately I got it all over the second hoop. So this quite literally has my blood, sweat, and almost my tears and in, put into it. I think there are going to be some tears when I'm attempting the final two. And given the body fluids that have gone into this, I feel like it should look a lot better than it does. I'm just saying. This is like an hour of footage speeded up of me adding the final two bones. There didn't end up being tears or more blood, so that was a positive, but probably the only positive of this entire process. So I just wanted to jump on here at the end to give a little wrap up and share my final thoughts on this project. And my final thoughts after filming this video and editing it are really mixed. I was expecting to really despise this project and to hate how it turned out, but I think it actually resembles the picture more closely than the elliptical hoop skirt that I made in a previous video. And all things considered, it did only take two days to construct. So even though it was a tedious two days and filled with lots of painful little finger blisters, it was only two days of time and effort. And I think considering that, this turned out surprisingly well. The pattern is very true in silhouette and shape to the image that is shown alongside the pattern. The only difference, and the thing that really bothers me about this project, is the collapsing of the boning that forms the bustle. So in the hip region or at the sides where the bones end, they curve inward and they end up bunching up and forcing the bustle and the hoop skirt forward. And I don't see how they could possibly look the way they do in the image unless the bones were cut much longer and continued around to the front of the skirt. But the there's nothing in the pattern that shows that happening or makes it seem like that would be the case. However, that's the only way that I could personally see getting that to look anything like the image. So it might just come down to a difference of materials and the materials they were using in 1872 lent themselves better for that method and technique and the bones could end without collapsing inward towards the body and pushing the whole thing forward. Now I did try putting a small bustle underneath this and a bump pad just to force the shape back and to exaggerate the shape a little bit further, but it didn't end up helping much at all. So that's my major peeve with this project, and I think it bothers me most because I can't see any way to fix it. Uh, even if I were to make another one, I don't know how I'd improve upon that. So that's kind of frustrating, but sometimes that's what happens when you're working on very limited instructions, or in this case with no instructions at all, as well as with a pattern that doesn't have very many markings on it. So it kind of just is what it is, and I think all things considered it turned out much better than I was expecting, and that I am going to get some use out of it and to build a dress that will go over top of this. So thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. It was a little bit of an adventure with some ups and downs and some dogs mixed in, and I really hope it was enjoyable for all of you. Certainly more enjoyable than it was for me. So thank you so much for watching, and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed, then giving this video a like and a comment really helps me out. If you want to see me make something that goes over top of this, then you should subscribe and let me know. So thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to all of you very soon.